Jai Gurudev, Gurudev, thank you for taking the time to speak with us about the profound teachings of the Ashtavakra Gita. To begin with, can you explain what sets the Ashtavakra Gita apart from other spiritual texts? Jai Gurudev, the Ashtavakra Gita stands out for its clarity and directness in pointing towards the self-realization of one's true nature. Unlike many spiritual texts that elaborate on various practices and rituals, the Ashtavakra Gita is a direct conversation between Sage Ashtavakra and King Janaka focusing on the essence of non-dualism and the immediate realization of the self. It is a dialogue that speaks directly to the heart of human experience and consciousness. You mentioned in your talk that one's heart and mind should become like butter, not like a rock. Could you elaborate on this analogy? Certainly when we say the heart and mind should become like butter, it implies softness, receptivity and the ability to melt in the warmth of love and wisdom. A mind that is rigid like a rock resists change and clings to its own patterns. In contrast, a heart and mind that are soft and pliable can absorb the teachings of wisdom and compassion, allowing them to flow and transform one's life. How does one cultivate such a state of mind and heart, especially in today's fast-paced world? Cultivating such a state requires a combination of awareness and practice. Awareness of one's thoughts, emotions and reactions helps in observing how often we become rigid or closed off practices like meditation, mindfulness and maintaining a balance in life's activities soften the mind and heart engaging in acts of kindness and remaining present in each moment also contributes to the softness and receptivity in the ashtavakra gita it is mentioned that even those who are detached can become captivated by the charm of the divine how should one interpret this this illustrates the paradoxical nature of spiritual realization even those who have renounced worldly attachments can be captivated by the divine presence as the allure of the divine is beyond mere worldly attra- attractions it is the ultimate surrender where even a detached mind recognizes the divine charm and finds itself drawn towards it. This is the beauty of the spiritual journey where the ultimate renunciation leads to the ultimate union. You spoke about the importance of answering questions only when asked and in the proper way. Why is this significant? This principle underscores the importance of readiness and receptivity in the seeker. When advice or knowledge is offered unsolicited, it often falls on deaf ears because the recipient may not be prepared to receive it. When questions are asked earnestly and with humility, it indicates a genuine seeking and openness, making the imparted wisdom more impactful. It is about the right timing and the right approach to sharing wisdom. Could you share a bit more on how King Janaka, despite his vast responsibilities, sought detachment and inner peace? King Janaka's story is fascinating because it highlights that true detachment is not about renouncing responsibilities but about maintaining an inner sense of freedom despite them, despite them. As a king, Janaka had immense duties towards his kingdom and people, yet he sought and achieved a state of detachment where he could perform his responsibilities without being entangled by them. This is a profound lesson in living in the world with full engagement while maintaining inner serenity and detachment. How can someone in a modern-day context apply this principle of detachment while fulfilling their daily responsibilities in modern life? Applying this principle means performing one's duties with full dedication and attention, but without being attached to the outcomes. It involves cultivating an attitude of equanimity, where success and failures, praise and blame are viewed with the same balanced perspective. Meditation and self-inquiry are tools that help in nurturing the state of detachment, allowing one to engage fully in life while remaining centered and at peace within. You mentioned that knowledge flows when there is both respect and love between the disciple and the teacher. Can you explain this dynamic? The relationship between a disciple and a teacher is unique. Respect ensures that the discipline is open to learning and values the teacher's wisdom, while love fosters a closeness and trust that allows knowledge to flow freely. When there is only respect, there can be a distance. When there is only love, there may be a lack of discipline. The combination of both creates a conducive environment for profound learning and transformation. Finally, what is the essence of the Ashtavakra Gita's teachings on how one can attain knowledge and freedom? The essence of the Ashtavakra Gita's teachings is to recognize that you are already free and knowledgeable by nature. It is about realizing that your true self is beyond all dualities and limitations. The text guides one to see through the illusions of the mind and the world and to rest in the awareness of one's true self. This realization brings about a natural detachment and a profound sense of peace and liberation. Thank you, Gurudev, for sharing your insights on the Ashtavakra Gita. Your words provide a deep understanding and practical guidance for those on the spiritual path. It has been a pleasure discussing this profound text. May the teachings of the Ashtavakra Gita inspire and guide everyone towards a life of wisdom, 
freedom and inner peace. Jai Gurudev.